Sam Jay Darrell, um, candidate number 2012120, um, and this is my presentation for our choreography um, assignment unit 5C, um, and I will be looking at two choreographers that have influenced my ideas and my thinking towards my next choreographic piece. So a little bit about myself. Um, I began studying at dance at New College, so I was quite new to dance in terms of my age when I started dancing. And I went on to start doing the A levels, so I think, doing GCSE work um, or anything like that. So I went straight in as A level for my first year and went on to do a P tech. Um, while I was there, I choreographed solo, duets, group work, both on myself and for other people. Um, and a lot of those were selected for performances like the dance and um, college um, sharings as well. Um, and I looked at a range of different stimuli, artwork, music, scripts. Um, I worked with a script that was actually um, being looked at by um, the drama and performing arts students as well, um, which was quite a challenge because it was all we got given was the script and we had to then find new movement and ideas from that. Um, I also participated in workshops with a range of different um, companies, Flash, <coughs> Motion House, Tavazika, all of those are completely different type of movement and ideas and how they would choreograph pieces themselves. Um, I also learned how to edit videos and music, which I later then also did in college. Um, but in terms of choreography, it was just a range of different things like this was something that I was specifically looking at, it was something that I was usually tasked to do for my greatest. Um, I then went on to get a degree at Oxford University in Leicester. That was very much looking at the Alexander Technique um, and when I went there and started studying um, choreography and geography and um, psychology and things of dance, I found that I didn't really have a lot of direction in my choreography. And when it came to my dissertation year, my choreographic um, ideas were challenged when I was asked to work with a composer and we didn't agree with the ideas we both had for the piece. So that was a massive challenge for me in terms of trying to find my own ideas but also work with another person. Um, I also worked with my, careers to, uh, my peers to create dance for screen. Um, which looked at the way the body moved and that also challenged me a lot because a lot of the time I'd be used to just dancing on the stage um, or having the whole of my body being looked at which just rather than it be the, the whole body and the whole stage being looked at it was trying to find movement and make a piece that where you could just over my arm or my head or whatever. it was just it challenged me a lot in terms of the way I saw movement and the way I saw dance because that to me I wouldn't have seen that as dance, so that was a big challenge. I love to have control of my own work, so a lot of the time, especially the composer in my third year, I hated it because in a way I had to um, compromise my own ideas and my own understandings of dance and how I wanted it to look because I was working with someone that, that just didn't agree with what I was looking at as well. I am currently um, a freelance and a teacher within a performing arts school, so a lot of my choreography for that is for shows, it's a lot of show dancing, um, so I'll just be given a piece of music, it's usually pop music, or you know, a theme of like jazzy music, and it's not really <coughs> challenging my creative flow, um, because a lot of the time it's just making the dancers look good technically. And, uh, since being on the DDP, I've been learning how to lead sessions and create movement, so rather than me just going in and showing children and showing students what I want them to learn, it's finding ways to create movement from them as well. So again, taking the control away from myself. With my choreography, I'm looking to explore a stimulus um, looking at the particles within solids, liquids and gas. Um, and within that, how I can then translate that onto um, the stage is relationships within the dancers. And how they, the particles move, I will then have that relate back to how the dancers move on stage. So, for example, if they're solid, they'd be really restricted, quite tight, maybe really close together. Whereas if it was um, looking at the way the gas moves, the particles in that move rapidly, um, really fast and that far apart. So that's when my body is starting at the moment. Um, 
I've got up there um, there's so many all children young people learn about within school and so it will nurture and support their academic education as well. Um, we would also be exploring movement alongside a piece of music I found um, where we ask the students to use their own ideas and interpretations of this to create phrases. I'll be challenging myself with this because um, I'm going to be using ideas that I haven't used before and I'm going to be asking the students to give me some movement ideas because I like to have control. <laughs> so for me, this piece, I'm going to not give myself all of the ideas and all of the, um, the responsibility to make the piece. I'm going to allow my students to be part of the choreographic process. My best choreographer is Les Kenyon. Um, as we've been quite well aware, he was a pioneer of contemporary dance, modern dance. Um, he first of all studied, um, began studying dance at 12 years old. He then attended the Cornish School of Fine and Fine Arts in Seattle. Um, he went on to then meet John Cage, which eventually became his partner, um, but was also a composer. And um, Cunning and Cage worked quite closely together for most of their lives, most of their um, performing and arts lives, um, to make pieces that not just um, work together but also really just opposed to each other in terms of how it was created. So Merz kind of would come up with the dance, for example. Cage would come up with the music, and it may not actually come together until that night of the performance. Um, he kind of then went on to um, join the Market Graham Dance Company. He then debuted some of his solo works. After he started to begin to choreograph, he then set up his own company. Um, and came back to work at the place of the week. Um, Charles Dance and Cunningham's processes. Most Cunningham has been a major influencer within the post modern dance. He's therefore considered quite an important choreographer of our time because he questioned a lot of how dance <coughs> would look, also how dance could be made. Um, I've chosen to look specifically at Charles Dance, which he's extremely famous for, um, just because. That's something I've never worked with before. It's a challenge for me just because of the way it would work in terms of my choreographic processes. Um, he likes to find, uh, sorry, it's an abstract method which allows disassociation between what is happening on stage by avoiding any pre planning of what the material and over, overall finished piece would look like. Instead, this allows the material to be coincidentally sequenced and the end product to be randomised. Um, most of them believe that dance should be organic and human orientated, meaning at times what was at the finishing stage could be seen as pedestrianised. Um, it takes away the pressure of fitting in with dance expectations and allows the dance to be a moment of movement without a reason for its being. Um, again, he used chance for both creating um, phrases as part of the choreographic process and for his performances as a whole. So, for example, he Roll dice to determine the order of the phrase. Flipping a coin to choose which section might be performed first, like what we did earlier um, today in one of our lectures, where we had like yes no coins, or we were rolling no dice to work out a sequence of movement. Um, and he also, as I said previously, created music and dance as separate entities. So Cage would create a piece of music, and Cohen would create his dance, and they would not know each other's similar, each other's ideas until that evening of the performance. Um, and I've just got a, a little quote. To open my eyes to something I don't know about rather than me simply repeating something that I already have dealt with. So for Cunningham, it was about finding those new ideas, those fresh ideas that he maybe hasn't done before. And it was challenging himself and always challenging his audience as well. So how did I use this? Um, I will be working with children aged 10 to 12 years old. Um, they work in the stage school, um, but they haven't really looked at creating movement themselves. So for me, I would be looking at improvisation and really challenging their idea of how they can create dance as well, as well as myself. Um, so one task I thought of doing was providing an image for the students to improvise with. Um, so if I think about the elements of, um, sorry, the particles of solid, gas and liquid, I could think about being restricted. Being free, being apart and close, and the fluidity of the liquid, and giving them ideas on how they can start to think about their movement. From there, I could 
I would then um, get us all to have a look at each other's movements and pick out, say, four, four different movements, and we would number those between one and six, with one, one of the um, numbers left over being for stillness and the other being for restart. So, for example, if I roll my dice 16 times, that would be the pattern I'd come up with. At number two, being stillness, I would just stand still. And at number six, being restart, I'd have to restart my whole phrase again. So it's a random way of the length of um, a motif as well as what could come up, but there would also still be the link of the movement still connecting the while on stage. Um, chance takes away the risk of overthinking and allows me as a choreographer to let the piece guide itself. So again, taking away the control and me thinking, this is how I want it to look. My second choreographer is Richard Falston. Um, he was born here in England, in Sussex. Um, he's inspired by Frederick Ashley, the film man of Gardi at the Royal, Royal Ballet. Um, and he went to watch it and it actually um, inspired him to become a choreographer. Um, he also then went, um, was one of the first students at the new London Contemporary Art School. So that's quite a pioneering thing here to be one of the first students there. He then formed the UK's first independent dance company called Strider, um, and he was also um, a dancer and a trained with Nelson Hover, so there's a link there with them too. And um, he travelled to New York to study with Nelson Hover, and then came back um, to England because he was then going to do resident choreographer with Barley from there, and he's still got his company now, which, as we heard earlier, is soon to be um, finished in 2020. Dance, music, and tea and Oxford's choreography. Um, similarly to Cunningham, Rich Dawson experimented with the ideas of dance, where he explored and developed a dialect within dance and its connection with music. Olsen's inspirations come from the music he uses, and he is known for his innate musicality. At times, Olsen's style can be compared to most Cunningham's, because they've both got you know, linear lines, and it being quite clean looking. Um, working with Cunningham reminded Rich Dawson of what stimulated his choreography, music, which is completely different to how Cunningham worked. So they opposed in terms of how they would use their music. Also, the starting point on most parts is always about music. Um, when he finds a piece, he will listen to the structure, the layers, and sound before any form of the movement is created. From here, he would then teach his dancers the material he has choreographed. However, the importance in his dances is what they bring to the piece and what they and how they bring it as an individual dancer, as opposed to what he would like it to look like. So sometimes it might be that actually it's not a uniform to dance. And it's all about the um, individual and how they would dance his piece. Also, believes the dancer, the dancing should be what is inspiring, it should not be overshadowed by the music. So, although he uses it as um, the beginning point, he doesn't want it to be so overpowering that the audience is not looking at the dance. It's just there to support the dance and to, um, to support the dancers that are on stage. As a choreographer, he sees the material being sculpted as it happens. Working with repetition and the rhythms he finds within the dancers. <coughs> Similarly, with Cunningham, um, Olsen will not preempt how the piece will look once finished and instead allows the material to be danced and for it to be spontaneously developed. And I found um, a great as well. Um, what I believe in is the amazing power and complexity of the human body and sex in rhythm and music, and that doesn't change. How do I use this? And when considering the use of sound and music, there are endless possibilities in which I could use this to motivate my own choreography. At the process of creating movement without it being a sort of driver of the piece. For example, um, separate sections to the choreographic process and look at the structure of the music. So instead of me just choosing a piece of music because I really like it, what do I like about it? What are the layers in that music? Are there layers in that music? And finding the layers and finding the structure of this to help structure and section my own choreography. I think that's something that I don't do because I just go for a piece of music that I just quite like. It just sounds nice um, and I might see an image in my head but I don't actually think about how that might be able to influence the piece and influence the movement and the task that I could think of um, giving to the, to the students. Um, and combining 
coming of his ethos of improvisation and Alston's influence on music to find each individual's perception of what they hear. So it could be that I put on a piece of music once I've found one, one, ask the students to mind map what they, what they think of it, any layers they might hear, any images they might see from the music, and get again their own perception of the music alongside my own and see if there's anything that correlates, anything that is completely opposite to how we are thinking. In conclusion, although Mads Herringham and Richard Olsen offer some opposing choreographic ideas and the methods used to create a performance, there are also similarities in the openness they use to piece it all together. They find organic and natural movement and in turn, uh, and turn this into the dance. Upon reflection of my piece, I'm looking at ways to challenge myself as well as work to my strengths. So I really like working with music. I have quite good musicality, but I, I don't instill that into the students that I teach. I usually just try and teach them the moves and hope that they are picking up with the rhythms. I don't teach them how to use the music to help with the dy dynamics of their movement or how they can use it to influence the movements that they might think of. Um, using child dance will lose complete control of the pathway that piece will take, allowing both myself and the dancers to explore and integrate more than one idea. It avoids me as a choreographer from pre-planning the aesthetics and how I want it to look and the, how I want the whole piece to come across to the audience by allowing focus to be on the relationships between the choreographer and me, uh, me as a choreographer and then as dancers, the music and the dancers and the dancers themselves. With Olsen's methods, I am able to appreciate the music I choose as an important but separate aspect of the performance. It provides room for me to choreograph my interpretation but also encourage my own dancers to find their own interpretations on how the music can influence their dynamics. Any questions? Um, you've spoken a lot about how you like to be in control, <laughs> like me, yeah. um, and like you want to challenge yourself. And I was just thinking with music, you mentioned um, at the beginning when you were yeah. writing a piece that you'd already selected a piece of music. Okay. And then you went on to say how you were using um, chants um, to, to create the movement material. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you would consider using chants to select your music, whether that be yeah. like, I'm going to select that piece of music through chants, or you, you yourself choosing, mm -hmm. say, six pieces of music. Mm. And then using chants to select that just to yeah. challenge yourself further. Yeah, I did think about doing that, and the other thing I also thought about doing was instead of me giving them music straight away, was to um, allow us as a group to improvise and move up with the ideas of um, relationships on stage being really tight, being really free, and not give them the, the, uh, the music at the very beginning of the process, mm. and actually maybe halfway through just putting it on and seeing how they react to that. But I did also think about how I still try to take that little bit of control yeah. by trying to choose the, mu the music myself. So I could take on the idea of choosing um, a few, but then again, that would also be me choosing the music. Yeah. So another idea I did think was sharing the ideas and the stimuli of the piece and allowing the students to also give me ideas on music mm -hmm. because the children I work with, they, talk, they work a lot with um, pop music and things, but maybe giving them all a few choreographers that I know, um, sorry, composers that I know, and seeing if they are able to find music or they hear music that might also allow them into the process of choosing my music. Yeah. But yeah, I have, I realise as I am going along that I'm still trying to gauge gain that little bit of control back. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. 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 Could you have more trust in your self and your theme? So your starting point is the theme of your podcast. Yes. And the starting point is not the music. So maybe thinking, having more trust in yourself mm -hmm. when it comes to creating, seeing what happens there. Yeah. And forgetting about the music for a while because you've got that theme that's, a, that's quite yeah. a big thing you're going to work with. So yeah. maybe, like you said, the choreographers, maybe the music isn't as important for what you're trying to show right now. Yeah. Um, would you consider that? Yeah. So I suppose that kind of big into me not playing the music at the, mm -hmm. um, at the very start of this, but maybe I could just not choose the music um, and just, yeah, get rid of the idea that I did have because. To me, the music I have chosen, 
I could still see an end game as to what I want it to look look like. So that is probably taking away the challenge I'm trying to give myself of not having that control. So yeah, 100% I could do that. Would you, had you considered not using music at all and using some different kind of soundscape? Yeah, I didn't think of different soundscapes, but um, I did think about also using the silence because um, silence can be quite difficult to dance to if you haven't done it before and it would be a challenge not just for the dancers but for me to be able to see the movement and the rhythms within that. Um, so I did think about using silence as well, whether that was just for half the piece or um, at all, I'm not sure yet. But yeah, soundscape, um, especially with what we were doing earlier in the lectures, where we put on um, the interview, I did think maybe I could just find someone reading about um, the particles and maybe that could become part of the soundscape instead of just being completely music. I did think about that as well earlier. <laughs> <laughs> what, what age are you on? Um, 10 to 12, so that's a year. Um, I'm going year 5-6 yeah. um, up to year 8 because the children, um, the girls that I work with, they're all in the same um, classes. So they do a lot of syllabus work and a lot of competition work, but they've never actually been asked to create their own movement. Mm -hmm. So it's really like really interesting <laughs> to see how they work with not not like not music yeah. and just someone talking. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Jade. You.